So this is my Samsung M51. This is the smartphone that I've had for about a year at this point, still works perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever, and this guy has suffered through some serious bumps. It fell so many times that I practically lost count. It fell from my bike at some point motorcycle bike but it's all thanks to the protective case that i can make sure that my smartphone doesn't really suffer any sorts of serious damage i'm not gonna throw this stuff around willy-nilly but at least with accidental damage it is protected now i'm not planning to upgrade this anytime soon it works just fine and it still works just fine but i did go to the market to look at the newest and latest smartphones i've been saving quite a bit and there's a good chance that this thing decides to break all of a sudden for one stupid reason after another so i try to keep up with the latest smartphone trends in the mid-range to see what's up the smartphone that i've had on my wish list is the samsung a52 yes in case you don't know samsung makes cheaper phones that puts them at a much higher level than apple who not only makes expensive phones they make expensive stuff in general i mean have you seen the price of their monitor stand no really it's a thousand bucks for a monitor stand for the record, the only stand that I pay for that price is Crazy Diamond. Anyway, Samsung A52 is pretty much the best value king. You got a lot of premium Samsung features, but with significantly less price. Great camera, great speakers, great screen, high refresh rate, decent gaming performance. All of those features for around 350 to 400 bucks, depending on where you get them. I look at the local stores around here in Bali, and I can get them super easy for around $356 on the 256 gig version. In my opinion, best bang for the buck now i don't have the a52 my m51 works just fine and if you can get this one too i also highly recommend it it's also pretty amazing there are also other options that you can go to of course xiaomi's phones have been seriously competitive lately yes it's a chinese brand but their products can be really good and extremely competitive for the price thankfully you as consumers have so many amazing options that you can go to in terms of mobile phones nowadays good smartphones are getting cheap and cheap smartphones are getting Getting good and that's great for everyone so imagine my shock when i heard that the samsung a53 is out wow just when i was contemplating to get my samsung a52 the a53 decides to come in and steal the competition what an amazing day there aren't really a lot of changes though it has slightly bigger battery and better refresh rate compared to the original a52 but still the same as the a52s which is their slightly updated version but still it's cool to see this mid-range phone upgraded to the next level so is this the next best value best bang for the buck phone for everyone to enjoy it has no headphone jack. I I'm sorry, what? That's right, the Samsung A53, the next generation of Samsung's mid-range smartphone, has no headphone jack. Samsung, this is your mid-range. You can do it with your flagship Samsung. Go ahead, try to be iPhone all you like. But what's with the removal of the headphone jack? on your mid-range oh and uh, another thing they don't provide a charger in the box or at least some people didn't get a charger in the box because apple did it and now they're doing it too and everyone else is doing it too at this point a lot of features that smartphone manufacturers remove are driving me absolutely nuts so in this video i want to talk about the ones that really irritate me and i'm also going to be talking about how i'm able to deal with them it's mostly the headphone jack more and more people need technology these days, but corporations love it to make technology harder and harder to get. Let's deal with the one feature that I really care about on the phone. The headphone jack. I really do care for this feature. I listen to music, I watch videos, I listen to live streams or podcasts. The inbuilt speakers in the F51, actually it's not very good but sometimes you don't want to hear it through the speakers and disturb everyone around you sometimes you just want to have a little bit of privacy and immerse yourself in the audio and that's why we have the headphone jack but nowadays flagship phones are removing the headphone jack it all started with apple and when they do it they say that we the consumers don't really need the headphone jack and how it takes courage to remove something like that in the same way that it takes EA the courage to remove the billions of features that they had in any of the recent sports games compared to the previous ones. And ever since then, Samsung and many other smartphone manufacturers follow suit, removing the headphone jacks on their phones to make sure that it follows Apple's industry standards that they're trying to set in. Well, to be fair to Apple, at least they're actually letting the competition to be, well, competitive, even if the competition has to rip them off including the act of removing the charging brakes. 
For now, let's focus on the headphone jack because this move, the one that they call courageous, isn't actually courageous at all. In fact, it's purely a business decision. Apple creates a problem so that they can sell you the solution. So, the headphone jack is removed. If you're the kind of person who likes private listening, what are you going to do? Well, obviously, you're going to buy one of those lightning to audio jack dongles. Try finding the good ones instead of the ones that Apple made that will always 100% break. There are also dongles that have a headphone jack and charge at the same time. Also, try to find good ones on those because, again, they break easily. So it's going to be a big dongle life for all of you. Dongle, dongle, dongle. You can also buy earphones that have a lightning connector in the end, another product that Apple will happily sell you to. And if you don't like wires at all, Apple has their AirPods. These are called True Wireless Earbuds or TWS, but I'm going to call them True Wireless Earbuds. These are also things that dominated the market to the point where it has led to many cheap clones and ripoffs and competitors, a lot of which are even better than the ones that Apple gave to you and sold for much cheaper. Proving once more that Apple isn't a tech company, it's a luxury product company. Thanks to Apple and so many smartphone manufacturers removing the headphone jack, it has led into the rise of a brand new industry. Wireless audio. Well, wireless audio isn't really brand new. It's been out for years, but they are rising more and more in popularity right now. Some of the most profitable phone accessories industry right now is the wireless audio department, a lot of which led by the big smartphone industry themselves. Apple and Samsung. Apple has their own audio engineers and manufacturers. They make all sorts of wireless earbuds, such as the AirPods, which went through several generations and revisions. And oh, let's not forget the fact that they bought Beats as well. That's right, Apple bought Beats a while back, and they make lots of audio products too. Some are pretty good, admittedly, but most are not. Samsung, on the other hand, bought AKG, which led them to making lots and lots of wireless earbuds. The most famous one is the Samsung Galaxy Buds, also known as the Beans. Fun fact, uh, the Buds themselves are named Bean Left and Bean Right, so it's not just us giving it a silly nickname, it's also the Samsung engineers themselves. And then other wireless audio manufacturers come into the play. Bose is the most famous one, they do make some great stuff. Anchor, I bought a couple of them, this is the Anchor Soundcore Life Q30, which is my brother's daily wireless headphone, very good for the price. JBL is another one that's pretty big. Even smaller smartphone manufacturers like Xiaomi and Oppo are doing their own wireless audio. Thanks to everyone and everything going wireless, there's pretty much no need for a headphone jack. And the thing is, I'm not too worried about the loss of headphone jacks. And the reason is because I myself have gone wireless as of late. I have a Bluetooth speaker, the Ultimate Ears Wonder Boom 2. Really powerful Bluetooth speaker for about $70 that I paid for. I use this all the time in my house and I find it more convenient than hooking it up with an aux cable. This doesn't have an aux and it still uses micro USB, but it does have the incredibly punchy sound and I love it. And while I don't have true wireless earbuds, I do have two wireless blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they almost fell down. Two wireless Bluetooth receivers. These two are from Ugreen. I bought them for about 30 bucks. I think actually it's not about 25, 30 bucks each. All it does is receive audio wirelessly. All you need to do is there's a headphone jack there. You plug in your favorite headphones or earphones or whatever. And you just need to connect this to your phone. And then boom, you got the... Um, semi wireless audio. I usually have this plugged into my KZ ZSN Pro, which is my go to uh, everyday earphone. As you can see, it's uh, <laughs> it's been used for quite a while. You can also have an aux cable and plug this into the aux jack on your car. It works just fine. Yes, they have their own separate batteries and yes, they use micro USB, but I have two of them. So if one of them ran out, I just need to charge this one and connect the other one. It's like reloading a gun with a different magazine. Ugreen is not really a popular brand outside of Asia, I think. So if you want to buy audio receivers like these, try to look for Bluetooth audio receivers on your local stores or Amazons or whatever. Fio has a bunch of these. You got the Fio Micro BTR, which is their most affordable line. But you also got the BTR5, which can actually run headphones that require much more power. Like my Bayer Dynamic DT990. I actually use this as my daily driver at school. I need an amp to run this, which my audio interface thankfully provides. This one is 250 ohms, so it requires a lot of power, but Dankpods ran the Sennheiser HD 600, which is 300 ohms, on the BTR5, and it apparently still sounds great out of that, so I assume that with the BTR5, I can have my uh, wireless 
technically speaking, wireless uh, Bayer Dynamic DT990. And yeah, after a little bit of transitioning, I am willing to go wireless on my audio. Granted, it's not the easiest thing, and I need to spend a little bit more money, but I can go full wireless for my audio. And yeah, I do enjoy my private audio wirelessly. With the right equipment and tools, wireless audio can be mostly as good as wired audio. Mostly. Some audio files will notice the difference, but 99% of people won't even notice it, which is why they're not really bothered by the lack of headphone jack, because the wireless earbuds that they have do exactly as they're told. Deliver audio. I'm not worried about the headphone jack because I don't get audio. I can still have my private audio and listening sessions even through my favorite earphones or even my favorite headphones. I am worried about the headphone jack because it means that you need to spend more money. You need to spend more money. You need to spend more money on dongles. You need to spend money on wireless audio, wireless audio receivers, or you need to spend more money on wireless headphones. That means that people who don't have a lot of disposable income have to buy other new stuff before they can enjoy the phone's other features. And yes, it is expected with phone accessories. They're accessories after all. They're not needed in the box. But I want you all to realize that there used to be a time where the phones you bought also came with earphones. I bought the Samsung Note 9 a while back. It came with those AKG earphones. They're not super amazing. They're they're pretty garbage, actually. I might have gotten a fake one, but because there are so many fake one of these, I don't recommend them at all. But at least they work, and it's a nice bonus for people who don't have earphones, as this might be their very first phone that they have. They don't need to buy the earphone again in order to enjoy private audio because they already have the earphone in the box. Nowadays, you don't get them at all, especially when they remove the headphone jacks. Sometimes you get one of those earphones that actually connect to Type-C or a Lightning, but those are pretty much useless because they only connect to one device, and that's your phone. The thing is, wireless earbuds like these, they're super cheap. Anyone can afford these. Like, this is like the KZZSN Pro. This is a more on their expensive tier, which is like about... Um, 20, 20, 30 bucks, depending on where you get them. I, I say around 20 bucks. Yeah, 20 bucks for these. Uh, but you can also get their cheaper variant. The, I think it was the EDX. Uh, those are like 10 bucks. Uh, 10 around 15 bucks. KZ, these are great. Like seriously, for the price, these are amazing. Anyone can afford these cable earphones, which is why affordable phones still need to have their headphone jack so that people who can afford cheap wired earbuds like these... I'm just gonna disconnect you. <laughs> You're not needed. Okay. Anybody who can afford cheap wireless earbuds like these, they can enjoy the audio because they have a headphone jack on their phone. But because they don't have a headphone jack on their phone, they have to buy cheap dongles or buy cheap wireless audio. Now, I am fine with flagships removing the headphone jack. When I say flagships, I mean the most expensive tier phones from the brand, like the Samsung S series or the iPhones. Actually, iPhone in general. That's because most people who buy flagships are people who have lots of money because flagships are expensive. Most people who can afford flagships can't afford wireless audio. Most people who cannot afford flagships cannot afford wireless audio or don't want to afford wireless audio. So why does the Samsung A53, a mid-range phone, have no headphone jack? Having no headphone jack means that this phone is going to be treated like a flagship, a phone for people who are rich and can spend a little bit more money for wireless audio or dongles. Yes, there are loads of cheap wireless audio out there. 99% of you, a lot of you, can afford just fine. These are like 20 to 30 bucks depending on where you get them. And you can even buy cheaper ones that cost like 10 bucks. But that's the thing about phones these days. You also have to buy something else in order to get the essential experience. They remove the headphone jack so that you can buy other stuff that compensates for it. It's basically like a modern game publisher. Granted, it's only a one-time investment, but these wireless audio stuff would probably last the same as your phone, if not less. My brother's wireless earbuds broke a couple of times while his phones 
still work. Yes, it's due to his overall recklessness, but they did break. And that's another reason why the lack of a headphone jack sucks. The devices replacing them are not durable enough. Say what you want about earphones, a lot of them are pretty durable. Some of them went through washing machines and they still work just fine. You don't want to have your wireless audio stuff being put accidentally in the washing machines, especially wireless earbuds. They can get lost easily. Depending on which one you bought, they're also incredibly expensive. Expensive. So yes, it's more convenient having things wireless, but you also need to charge them because they have their own batteries as well. Some of them don't have Type-C, like most phones these days use Type-C, except iPhone because they use their lightning connector. Most phones these days use Type-C, and these ones use micro USB, so you need to carry two cables with different ends. It's convenient in one area, but it also adds inconveniences in other areas. So. It's not exactly more convenient having wireless, if you ask me, when you add more inconveniences in other areas. Wireless have the inconvenience of batteries, whereas wires have the inconvenience of... Wires. And here I am combining the worst of two worlds. This is why I just usually tie the wires up on my neck. It's like it's choking me, but at least it works. Also, there's one thing that cheap Bluetooth earbuds cannot compete against wired earphones. Sound quality. The Xiaomi Halo GT5 is one of the best budget, best value, true wireless earbuds right now. And I highly recommend it for those who prefer true wireless earbuds. Sounds very balanced, nice fit and comfort, and has a Type-C connector. My KZ ZSN Pro against my Xiaomi Halo GT5 that I gave to my brother that I don't have right now. Yeah, the KZ one. Easily. Better audio quality, better isolation, better comfort, significantly louder to the point where if I'm not careful, I can legitimately cause hearing damage. And most importantly, I can see where they are and I can plug this to whatever I want if I need to have this plugged in. This don't get lost as easily as wireless earbuds, which you can only connect through Bluetooth and they have batteries on them. And last but not least, latency, as in sound delay. Bluetooth will have latency. It's pretty much an inevitability. The lower the latency, the better. But some Bluetooth devices have more latency than others. This is especially concerning if you're gaming. If the sound cues came in late, you're gonna get wrecked. If you're just listening to music, it's perfectly fine. But if you're watching movies or shows, it's gonna be really bothersome. So you're gonna have to pick the right wireless audio with the lowest latency. The best way for you to know if your wireless audio supports low latency is to check out reviews. If the device support Qualcomm's Aptex, then there's a good chance that it does support low latency audio. It's one of those things that you have to consider when you're buying wireless audio. And it's something that most people couldn't really be bothered to look up and will only do so when they're listening to their movies or shows and videos and found out that the audio sings horribly. Now let's talk about the next feature that annoys me. So how are you going to charge your phone? A charger. You're going to need the cable and the brick. Guess what Apple decides to do? That's right, not including the brick. They still have the cable, but there's no more brick and people still buy it anyways. And since people still buy it anyways, it's perfectly fine if Samsung and Xiaomi follow suit, even after they make fun of Apple for doing exactly that. Don't you just love it? Don't you just love it that big corporations take things away from you so that you can pay them to get them back? Don't you just love it when smartphone manufacturers act like game publishers? I mean, with a headphone jack, fine. You can still get some decent audio with either wireless audio or a dongle. But the brick? Are you seriously gonna remove the brick? Yes, we still have our old bricks from our previous phones. But the thing about newer phones is that they have brand new charging capabilities. Fast charging, super fast charging, all of that stuff. If you're using the old brick, not only you're not getting faster charging, you might have the risk of breaking your phone, especially if the brick is from some cheap and dodgy third-party stuff. I love that the excuse for removing the charging bricks is to 
save the environment because we're using less boxes guys therefore we're saving the environment here's the thing yes you're using less boxes for the phone but you're not using less boxes for the charging brick that you sold separately right not to mention finding the right brick for the phone and finding the right wattage that is compatible with the phone because some phones support fast charging but only up to 25 watts some bricks can go up to 65 watts but those bricks are not compatible with phones that charge up to 25 watts even though they say that it supports up to the charge up to 65 watts no it does not support phones that charge up to 25 watts it will not charge this phone at all but hey this brick right here that actually supports charging up to 20 watts it does say it's fast charging and it can actually charge this phone brick <laughs> sorry yaki you're actually a pretty good brick it, it does support fast charging on my phone right here but uh, not super fast charging fast charging which is yeah, it's more than enough but still uh, <sighs> It's, just, it's, so, it's super frustrating, I swear to God. And finally, rest in peace to the microSD slots. That's right, microSD card slots have been removed in flagships and will be removed in future phones. And considering the direction that Samsung likes to do in their mid-range phones, they're also going to remove the microSD cards in their mid-range as well in the future because we hate you. So if you want to buy a lot of storage on your phone, you're going to need to buy a phone with a bigger storage. In other words, you need to pay corporations even more. Yes, internal storage is much faster, but an SD card has more storage. And sometimes I just want quick access to lots of movies or TV shows in my SD cards. There are so many features that phones have removed nowadays. You don't get free earphones anymore, especially when they remove the headphone jacks. Yes, you get those weird type C to lightning earphones, but why even bother at that point when it can only be used in one specific device? Removable battery used to be a thing until it's not. Physical buttons used to exist, but they're getting less and less. A lot of the features used to be prominent on phones, but that's no longer the case. Some for the better, some for the worse. All I'm saying is, there are several features from smartphones that are actually pretty useful, but as time goes on, they got removed by the manufacturers for all sorts of dumb reasons. Everything is going wireless these days. Even I have gone wireless, but going wireless will cost you more money and a lot of wireless stuff to have. Ah, it just fell. Yeah, seriously, the fact that these things are small and they can just like slip on your hand easily, like they... imagine if this is like a really, really expensive $300 through wireless earphone, like the case of it, it just fell and it just scatters everywhere. Like that's That happens a lot. It's the reason why my brother has to spend like lots and lots more money to buy more wireless earbuds because these these things can break easily. They're super expensive and they can break. These things don't break as easily. Seriously, they can go to washing machines and it will be just fine. And that's why I think smartphones are getting dumber. That's all for the video today. If you like it, you can go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support the channel through the links down below, stream channel link down below, go subscribe as well. And thanks for watching.